Hey guys, what's up? It's Dreadscape Gaming here, and today on the channel we're taking a look at one of the final builds that I will be showing all for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, because we've covered a lot of builds on this channel through Sunbreak's lifespan. That being, we're going to be taking a look at the best para build that you can possibly do with the dual blade. So, without further ado, let's get into things. So, we're going to be using the Raging Paws, which is the pretty much the cat dual blades it has 340 attack it only has unfortunately white sharpness so if you want you'll probably have to use handcraft but only white sharpness it gives you paralysis 23 no affinity no defense boost but it does give us a level 4 slot and a level 3 rampage slot we're going to be using for this build the risen mizuha armor because it is probably the best thing that you can use for status effects so we're going to be using the risen mizuha headdress this will give us peak performance level three everything else is gemmed in we're going to be using risen mizuha robes this is going to give us build up boost level one camilla's blessing level two or but whisper level one everything else is gemmed in next up we're going to be using the risen mizuha sleeves this is going to give us build up boost level one camilla's blessing level one foray level one everything else is gemmed in Next up, we're going to be using the Risen Mizuha Slash. That's going to give us the Warbug Whisperer Level 2, Foray Level 1. Everything else is gemmed in. Then we have the Risen Mizuha Golters. And this is going to give you Build Up Boost Level 1, Camellos Blessing Level 1. Everything else is gemmed in. For my Petalins, we're going to be using Underworld Petalins. Doesn't matter what you use, though. For the Talisman, I have a Critical Boost Level 3 with a Level 3 slot and a Level 1 slot. So, to replicate this build the way i have it you are going to have to do quite a few things a lot of talisman grinding hopefully you get lucky i really do hope for your sake so let's look at the decoration so in the raging pause we have four rage jewel plus four with a demon rage jewel two for the headdress we have the paralyzer jewel plus four and a tenderizer jewel two for the robe we have the trigger jewel three for the sleeves we have trigger jewel three tenderizer jewel two and a shockproof jewel one for Risen Mahusa Slash, we have the Hard Brace Jewel 4 and a Trigger Jewel 3. For the Risen Mizuha Golters, we have the Paralyzed Jewel 2, the Steadfast Jewel 1, and our Steadfast Jewel 1. For the Talisman, we have Tenderizer Jewel 2 and a Steadfast Jewel 1. So, with the full breakdown here, I'm going to show you exactly what you're working with. So, you have 375 attack, your Element Paralysis is 32, no Affinity. For your defense, you have 989 defense. This is with maxed out armor spears on each piece of the gear, as well as at least plus 10 in defense for every piece of your armor augmented. For our resistances, we have minus 22 fire, so we have to be careful with fire monsters. Water resistance, 8. Thunder resistance, 3. Ice resistance, 18. And dragon resistance, minus 12. So we have to be careful with dragons as well. For the full skills, I'm going to give you a breakdown here. We have Camellios Blessing, level 4. Gain the power of the Elder Dragon, Camellios. So here, at level 1, sometimes increased effects of Spirit Birds. At level 2, it negates minor and major wind pressure. At level 3, extends the duration of your poison effects on monsters. At level 4, also negates all wind pressure. Honestly, we're only going to be using this for the fact that it's going to negate all wind pressure. So we don't have to worry about, you know, getting wind pressure staggered. For Ray level 3, increase attack power and affinity when attacking a large monster affected by poison, paralysis, or an elemental blight. At level 3, while active, increase attack power plus 15 and affinity plus 20%. Peak performance level 3, increase attack when your health is full. At level 3, attack plus 20 while active. Critical boost level 3, increase the damage of critical hits. At level 3, increase damage dealt by critical hits to 40%. Weakness exploit level 3. Increase the affinity of attacks that exploit a monster's weak spot. At level 3, attacks that hit weak spots have 50% increased affinity. War attack level 3 is not going to matter if on this build. It's on the talisman, so don't pay any attention to that. Paralyze, oh, excuse me. Paralyze attack level 3. Increase the rate of paralyze build up. Paralyze build up has a maximum limit at level 3. Paral uh, paralysis build up plus 20%. Bonus plus 5. Evade window level 3 extends the invulnerability period when evading. At level 3, increase invulnerability window. Stun resistance level 3, reduce stun duration. At level 3, completely prevents stun. Flinch free level 3, prevents knockbacks and our reactions to small damage. At level 3, prevents knockbacks and tripping. This is important for dual blade users because we get tripped over every little monster that you can think of. 
Warbug Whisperer at level 3 improves your handling of Warbugs, so at level 3 it also increases passive recovery rate while on the ground. At level 1 basically extends the duration of how long you can keep a Warbug by 30%. At level 2 it also increases the recovery rate of Waterfall. Status trigger level 3 perform a perfectly timed evade just as a monster attacks to trigger abnormal status build up on hit. So at level 3 while active effect duration is 12 seconds. It's kind of nice to have. You're going to be able to evade certain things with the dual blades, but you have to get used to the timing, something that I'm not even that proficient with. Build up boost level 3. Increase attack power when you land attacks that build poison, paralysis, sleep, blast, or exhaust. This it also includes the ammo, files, and coatings of those things for exhaust. Okay, at level 3, while active, increases attack power by 20%. Shock Absorber level 1. Disables damage reactions when you hit a friend or when a friend hits you. Does not apply during certain status ailments. This is very important for multiplayer because it means you won't trip your opponents. Your opponents won't trip you. You will get knocked up into the air with, you know, switch axe users, hammer users, great sword users. So it's kind of nice to have this because you don't piss off your teammates and your teammates don't piss off you. Alright, so I'm going to give you a very quick demonstration against my favorite punching bag. Not there the great Azuchi, and then from there we will all part ways for the day like i said this is a good build just to kind of get the most paralysis that you can up now obviously there are better dual blades that you could use for end game that being you know the primordial Melzano dual blades the blast dual blades any of the end game elemental dual blades which you know they have a lot of attack and everything of the sort so this is one of those more for funsies and when you really want to play how do I put it? Um, more support based hunting. So let's go here. We're going to go fight the Great Azuchi with Dual Blades. What you're going to want to do is just build up your gauge, your demon gauge, and get into the red. Um, we could use like focus on here to kind of keep and maintain the build up, but it's not really going to be important because with Dual Blades, you should always be, for all intents and purposes, going aggro. If you're not, as you can see here, we already got one status just by hitting the monster one time i like to stay mostly grounded for narrow monsters however for the larger monsters maybe you want to go with the aerial dual blade version but aerial dual blades kind of comes out of cost i always feel like you can get a lot more dps damage per second when you go this particular way as you can see i'm just using wire bugs and abusing them as much as possible okay let's wait i got a little slide up there where's my azuchi friend okay there we go Please pardon the noise in the background. I do live by a very noisy city, so from time to time, EMS services do provide. But I do have noise gate on my recording devices. Hopefully, you didn't hear me mention that. As you see, we got a narrow paralysis off there. So what we're gonna do right now is this is a good time to sharpen our weapon because we don't get a lot of sharpness there. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the kunai hopefully successfully, and then we'll begin. Oop! I messed up there. That's fine. Oh. That's why I always hate when the NPCs throw the bombs in like the worst possible areas, but we might be able to grab rotation. Let me wait. Got a dodge off there. Knocked down by our teammates. That's good. We're going to go here again. Just go with the bread and butter combos of dual blades. Let's get our attack off. Should be hitting an air para. Sometimes you could get 12 paras in one hunt. We did get an air para there, so I think we're up to para count three if I'm counting correctly. Monster will probably die pretty soon. Let's see if we get that hit. Okay, good. On larger monsters, obviously, you're going to be able to abuse maybe evading a little bit more. Because unfortunately with the Izuchi, he doesn't. In fact, too much. We got Quantum Combo. That's not going to be good for us. All right. Thankfully, a little monster took the hit there. So we're good. We got a Nur knockdown. It's perfect. Wait for the characters to get out of the way here. Okay, good. That's a sleep into a para. So we got four paras if you're counting at home with us. Right off of the sleep, so that's great. Uh, of course, Teddy Bear comes in at the most terrible time. That was a horrible fun, and I am sorry for it. Let's move over here a second, because they are going to fight each other. Or not. That works too. Even better, because we don't have to play the minigame. Probably because it was parried so much. Let's go. Our monster friend is getting a bit tired here. He is in blue, which means the monster is close to death. We could capture if we want to. We're not going to do that because we don't really need to capture. Where does Uchi birth? 
All right. Really, all you want to do is always target the monster's weak spots. We got an air power off here. Perfect. So you're at home. We got so far five paralysis off this particular monster. So you're pretty much stun locking it for all intents and purposes with this build. Anyway, as you see, that's all there is to the para dual blades build. It's really good when you want to jump into a hunt and just, for all intents and purposes, play support and just stun lock the monster for your teammates. Obviously, this is the best para dual blades you could use, but you're not going to have purple sharpness. You can't really augment it to get purple sharpness as well, so you have to kind of make a decision as to what you really want to run in this build. I go for full-on status effect. If you wanted to, you could take out some of the stuff that I have in this build and put in razor sharp just so that you can maintain the white sharpness. But for all intents and purposes, you're mostly about statusing and not really being the big damage dealer on your team when you're playing this build. So keep that in mind. We're going to see what our clear time is. As I mentioned before, with a video that I put out earlier on YouTube, we are kind of at the twilight of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. So we're going to be wrapping up on showing any endgame builds within the next week or so because I've showed you just about every build that I could possibly show you to play effectively in endgame for Sunbreak. So I think it's time that now I kind of go off into the limelight with this game until Monster Hunter Rise, or excuse me, Monster Hunter 6 comes out, um, which we should be seeing an announcement of Monster Hunter 6 in the middle of september for the tokyo game show and when we do get the announcement i will react to the trailer and i'll probably do a couple of news tidbits with monster hunter as we count down to the next game but for all intents and purposes i'm pretty much done with everything that i have to show you for playing effectively in endgame for sunbreak so i do really appreciate everybody that came by for the builds anyway let's look at the clear time we got a three minute and 30 second clear time so if you follow this build exactly the way i have it laid out if you follow the damage rotations if you abuse wire bugs etc you should be able to replicate exactly what you saw here on screen and maybe even do a even better clear time anyway let's go and do it for today's monster hunter rise sunbreak video as always a like on this video is greatly appreciated if you're not already subscribed to the channel definitely consider doing so as it helps the channel grow and I will see you for the next one. Till next time, guys.